How many of you during these last weeks have experienced a certain kind of fear in your life? It could be a financial fear. It could be an emotional fear. It could also be a sort of a spiritual fear. All three of those fears can somehow sometimes coalesce and just make it seem like everything is just sort of hopeless and there's no freedom, there's no peace. I want you today to put on the altar any fear. Fear for yourself, fear for the emotions or the experience of your family, fear for our country, our world, for those. But then also I want you to realize something, that God is in control. Trust. And no matter how difficult it may be, no matter how many trials we go through, God is in control. Let us have courage, folks, and to know that no matter what happens, we, can, we must remain faithful to Christ. And in the midst of any trials, no matter how great the fear, that God has overcome all of those fears and all of that pain by climbing the cross, dying on the cross, and then rising from the dead. Fear has no hold over the Christian man or woman that believes in Christ.
Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. We gather today as we have the, um, begin our 12th week in ordinary time. Let us call to mind our sins, the times that we've offended the Lord, and ask for his forgiveness and his mercy. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who are my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped. Then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Our response, Lord, in your great love, answer me. For your sake I bear insult, and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my children, because zeal for your house consumes me. 
then the insults of those who blaspheme you shall fall upon me. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O Lord, for bounteous is your kindness, and your great mercy turn toward me. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and whatever moves in them. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin death, and, do- and thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who was the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for yet by the transgression of the one the many died. How much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. The word of the Lord. May the words of the Lord be in my heart and my lips. May worthy and joyfully proclaim this holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy body and soul in Gehenna. Are, you, are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Many times when I've read this reading from St. Paul, I, I've thought about the sin of Adam and the effects that have come down into so many experiences in our lives. The violence, the hatred, the division, the lack of communion that exists in homes, obviously in hearts, in countries, etc. And that evil that has been passed down from Adam has affected so many generations. And then in the gospel, in the second reading today, it speaks about, yeah, but the transgression is not like the gift. And I was thinking in my chapel today how profound that statement is. Because the gift of Christ, his free will offering on the cross, his death on the cross is everlasting. In other words, Adam's sin will in effect be limited when Christ comes again. There'll be no more division. There'll be no no more separation in the communion of the Trinity. But the gift, the gift that unites, the gift that is not just for the moment, but will grab all of eternity from the beginning of time until the end of time, the Alpha and Omega, that gift is the only gift that lasts, the gift of Christ on the cross. How many of us are suffering from that fear that is crippling us? We are afraid of the very things that we've put our lives, put our sweat into, our life support. How many of us are afraid that we look at all of those experiences in our lives that we thought were so foundational and we see them maybe under attack or not being built up or not supported, whatever. And so fear cripples in and in that fear, comes that hopelessness, 
that hopelessness which then causes us to think, oh my gosh, the transgression will swallow up the gift. That's not true. I invite you to think more profoundly of the permissive will of God and the joy that God has, even in the suffering, even in the pain, even in the sadness that God has for it one day sending his son back to humanity and drawing us all back to him. The mission of all of us that God has entrusted to us is to prepare our hearts, our loved ones, for the second coming of Christ. But we should not just live in fear. God will come and he will send his mercy upon all of us. And the transgression that Adam committed will no longer have authority over humanity, but the gift will reign. Let us have confidence that this is the message of Christ. The transgression exactly is not like the gift because the transgression is limited, but the gift is eternal. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Confident that God our Father hears our prayers, we now place these petitions before him. For confidence in Christ, that the Lord, that we will trust in God in all times as he overcomes the transgression of Adam, let us pray to the Lord. Holy Spirit, unite the body of Christ in our governments, in all of those who speak and, and act on behalf of our governments, that there will be an experience of unity and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for vocations to the priesthood religious life, that those you have called may respond with generous hearts. We pray to the Lord. And finally, for all who have died, for our loved ones, for our friends, for their eternal rest in the heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Good and gracious Father, hear our prayers and those in our hearts. We ask them through your Son, Jesus, through Mary's intercession as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth is given. Become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know that it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed Apostle St. Andrew, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and the precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Happy Father's Day to all the men and all of you who miss your dads or are with your dads or whose dads have gone home to the Lord. Um, today, don't forget, we have adoration of the Blessed Sacrament in the, what we call the multi-purpose room. 
till five and then confessions in the afternoon. God bless you. I hope you have a holy day and remember your dad, that man chosen by God to uh, be part of your life. God bless you. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never who you are and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Day in Rio, uh, Pope Francis asked for the church to go out and to evangelize. Well, at the Holy Ruckus, we're trying to do that. 